Hey guys, <clears throat> how are you? Cheers. And by the way, <laughs> I have to, I have to call out a note and say, if you're wondering why my sweatshirt that I have on this morning has spots all over it, it is raining like a boss outside, and I had to go put something in the mailbox. So my hair is wet, my sweatshirt's wet. Hey Dutch, hello Gleneth, whose hair is so cute. I bet you never look like I do with my like yoga mat head. Um, I am awesome, David. How are you? Nicole, I watched your scope last night. So cute. Um, you're so creative. Um, so that is why I am covered or still in my most comfy Victoria's Secret sweatshirt, which I'm obsessed with all of their stuff. You guys saw my Instagram post last night. Um, it's really transforming me into wanting all of their sweatshirts and almost not wearing the kinds of sweatshirts I used to wear, which is like Ohio State stuff. Hey, hey. Um... I hate to say this, I don't mean to say it this way. I was about to say happy September 11th, but it's kind of weird to say ha happy September 11th because we should be remembering. And I can't stand it when people go, oh my God, it's been so long. We should just forget. I don't think we should ever forget. That's not just a tagline. Um, and I'm curious, while you guys are coming in to the scope this morning, I'd love to hear where you were on September 11th. I was in Tampa on a business trip. Um, so I would love while I'm rambling through my introduction to hear where you guys were. And by the way, thank you for the hearts that you guys already did. Um, you know what? The number one thing I'm going to say about Periscope that would be awesome, high school outside of our gym. Um, that blows my mind. That tells me how old I am. <laughs> That's cool. I enjoyed your scope last night. I was in fifth grade in school. Oh, I'm glad you did. Oh, the, the things I hate Thursday. That was fun. I think that's going to, you were in college in your apartment. Um, I remember when the OJ verdict was read, I was in, at Ohio State in the parking lot. Um, so there's certain times that I, I remember everything. But um, I was actually, let me rewind really quick and do my introduction. For those of you that are new, that are just listening to me for the first time, God bless you. You might want to get some bourbon. Um, my name is Kelly Alexa. I'm CEO and founder of Fitfluential, F-I-T-F-L-U-E-N-T-I-A-L. Oh, New Jersey. Um, put your comment back up in a second. I want to read that because um, I, I just lost it as it was disappearing. Um, Fitfluential.com. I hope you um, head on over there and check it out and sign up and become a member. It's free. Subscribe because we've got um, fantastic workouts, free workouts and creative workouts all the time some of which I used to be skeptical about and then I tried them and got my butt kicked and uh, recipes. Um, transformation stories. We also have a new app. I keep forgetting to tell you guys that. Make sure if you have the old Fitfluential app on your phone that you head over over to iTunes or um, the Play Store and download the new app. Um, one of the things I tested out on the new app that I don't think it was on the old version, but it has like workout notes. So you're on your phone and you can take notes. Yeah, you could do that in Evernote or another app, but I thought that was pretty cool. I didn't know that was going to be in there. So you can do a workout via our app, right? And then record your notes on that workout. Pretty cool. I didn't even invent that, but I should probably take credit for it. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I also blog personally at kellyolexa.com, K-E-L-L-Y-O-L-E-X-A.com. For those of you watching the replay, thank you so much. And this is my thing that Periscope, I bet you guys are going to agree. Hey, Marsha, um, that, that needs to happen is when people watch the replays, they should be able to leave comments. Of course, that could be with some of the weird trolls that are on Periscope that have no life. <laughs> then that could be awkward because they will leave obnoxious comment. Never underestimate a workout. I did a boot camp to newbies and they were dying at the end. I have est underestimated a lot of workouts. Valerie Waters, I've told you guys about her celebrity trainer when I first got her red carpet ready workout. I was like, this is going to be too easy. It's just, I don't get it. It's just step ups and, you know, lighter weights. And <laughs> then I did it and I was like... Oh, holy mother of God. Um, I know I'm not the only one that futzes with my hair, guys. So I just watched several other scopes. Man, you had it too easy. Um, but really, hey, Amia. So before I dive into my um, topic on limits, which I'm excited to tell you guys on a Friday, I think you're going to enjoy hearing it. And I'm so glad that I'm wearing my glasses. In, in a way, one of the things, I'm not trying to poke fun or be uh, lighthearted, too lighthearted, but one of the things that I remember about September 11th is I was in Tampa on business the whole week, 
I was actually scheduled to fly in September 11th, but I flew in because I'm such a diva and I need to have my sleep. I flew in and changed my flight to the night before. So I flew into Tampa on September 10th. And then I was giving a presentation at a real estate office in Tampa. I should look up what office it was. And it was to a bunch of real estate agents. And I remember like at the back of the room that the um, real estate agent, uh, the manager of the office was like, are you almost done? And I remember like rolling my eyes going, come on, I'm just getting to the good part. Because it was, it was a virtual tour company I used to work for. And she's like, well, I just heard something from my daughter that there's an explosion in New York. And um, keep chiming in, you guys. I'd just love to hear really quickly where you were, where were you on, on September 11th? So she, um, she told me that there was some kind of explosion. And I remember back then that my thought was, oh, New York always has things. And I thought it was something small and that you'd hear about it on the news, blah, blah, blah. How are you? Good to see you. Um, and then, of course, as as I left, I, I turned the radio on in the rental car. And that's when I heard, the, I think I heard the first tower coming down. I was in New Jersey trying to get a, oh, my gosh, I can only imagine. Um, and, and here's the thing that I want to say today. Um, I mean, you guys might think this is silly, but these are all the, um, the, the, the um, magazines that I got like the next week. So I, I've kept all of these and I keep them up on my shelf there. And every September 11th, um, yeah, I go and I watch all the documentaries. These are the, um, this is not the topic, but I do think it's very worth talking about. You know, all of the USA, that's where I was staying, at the Doubletree, um, the Chicago Sun-Times. I kept all of my newspapers. This is back when USA Today was 50 cents. Wow. Um, and I kept all of this stuff. And, yeah, I mean, every September 11th, I'm going to look back and I'm going to think about it. Because here's the thing. And I, it certainly changed me. Um, sometimes you can say it changed you for the better. It changed you for the worse. But I always think about this when I watch that the stories of that day of people that were in New York, people that were on the planes, people that, um, you know, were helping with the rescue efforts, whatever. There were so many people that were affected by that. And it's so easy if you live in, you know, wherever. I live in Chicago, right? So I didn't have anybody personally that, you know, was in the towers, was in uh, D.C., was on the plane. So I don't know anybody personally. I know a lot of people that were affected. But sometimes it's easy to, to when something big and catastrophic like that happens to go, well, you know, that's for other people. And, and, you know, that's sad and whatever, but you become detached from it. And the more that I, I've watched some of these stories of parents that, that were talking to their kids in the towers um, before they fell, and I, I remember the story of this man, and he was he was talking to his son, and his da- he's like, Dad, you know, it's so hot in here, and, and we can't get out. And, and the dad's watching the television of his, you know, the Twin Towers, and he's talking to his son. Thank you for the hearts. Um, and, and his son's like, I don't think we're going to get out of here, Dad. I mean, can you imagine a father? And then the, he's like, something's happening, something's happening. And I'm getting, every time I tell this, I get chills. His dad watched the tower starting to fall, and he's talking to his son while his son was in that tower. And all I keep thinking about, all of the text messages, I literally have chills right now. Um, All of the people that lost a husband or a daughter or a boyfriend or a girlfriend, I guarantee you they would give anything if they had fought with their spouse that morning or their daughter or their son or their friend or their neighbor, if they said something that was regrettable, um, if they were in a fight where they weren't talking to each other. You know, I know a lot of people that have been in arguments with their parents and they haven't, they go, yeah, I haven't spoken to my mom in 10 years. And something like that happens and all of a sudden it levels the playing field. All of a sudden, all of our political differences, you know, when I look at people on Facebook and they get so crazy about arguing Republican versus Democrat, pro-life versus pro-choice, all of this stuff. And I'm not taking a side. I'm not going to, because I choose to not get involved. But guess what? If you're in the middle of the Twin Towers or anything catastrophic like that, do you think you're going to not help somebody, another human being, because of, you know, whether they go to church or not, or whether you're an atheist and they believe in God? It, It levels everything. And that was the beautiful thing about um, September 11th and certainly other catas- 
catastrophic events is that you start to see that human beings connect with each other and help each other because we're all human and that's what you do. Um, but whenever I am really angry with somebody, whenever I'm in any kind of argument that makes me want to, you know, and it's usually family, right? The holidays are coming up. All of us are like rolling our eyes going, oh, I have to see this person at the holiday or that person. I just challenge you the rest of your life to think about all the people that lost somebody um, on September 11th. And I just think about how much they wish they could take back what they said. And I'm not saying that to make anybody feel guilty. I'm just saying, like, if you if you're fighting with your spouse or your daughter or your whatever, whoever it is, and you say something and it's awful and you choose to not make up and, and say, I'm sorry and accept responsibility for what you did and realize that it's better to be kind than right. And it's better to restore a relationship than to let it, you know, move further and further apart. Just think about how many of those people would give anything for the chance to see their loved ones again. And it is a shame to take advantage or take for granted that you're going to have tomorrow. Do you know what I'm saying? None of us know if we have tomorrow. None of us know if we have, you know, the next day. If you hang up with your mom or your dad or your brother, or your sister or your spouse or whoever, and you're like, screw you, I can't. And you say something horrible and insulting. You don't know. There's an old Buddhist adage that says the trouble is you think you have time. We always think we have time, like, I'll deal with that later. Don't deal with it later. You know, if you adapt this policy of knowing that that might be the last time you talk to that person, whether they get hit by a car or something horrible happens or whatever, it really will change your relationships, I'm telling you. So every time I, th you know, think about September 11th, I just, it always reminds me of that because I've talked to some people, even in marriages and romantic relationships and they're like I just want to you know I just want to run away and I want to I want to go up here and I'm not talking to him or I'm not talking to her and I'm like what would you do if you're in this stupid fight about something that you think is significant something happened to that person and they died you would look back at what you're pouting about and say this is so meaningless compared to the big picture okay I digress Everybody go, and, and I hope that you choose to remember September 11th. That's all I have to say about that. And I certainly am probably going to be watching every single documentary on A&E and History Channel this weekend because that's what I do. Now, let me get right to my point. Um, good things and cheers with my Sundance coffee mug because whenever it rains out and is disgusting. Nicole, really quick, were you living in New York on September 11th? Um, Probably. I think you've always lived there. Um, I know so many New Yorkers now, more so than I did back then. Um, so I, I'll have to talk to you about that later. Maybe it's something you don't want to talk about. Um, one last little side note before I, one of the hardest hit towns. Oh, really? See, everybody was, I talked to some people. I was in a business meeting and I asked this one guy where he was and he was on one of the planes. It was so, not one of the planes that was hijacked, but it was so interesting to hear how people that were on non hijacked planes, what they didn't know and where, you know, how all of a sudden they're on this plane and all of a sudden they're being rerouted. Um, I digress one little, sh I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you this, but this has nothing to do with my topic, but I, it's just because it's here. I had to show you guys this. So one of our fit clients is Timex who has this, um, you guys might have seen my uh, Instagram post on this. So this is the I didn't plan to do this plug, but full disclosure, um, it's just so cool. So this is the Timex GPS One Plus watch. So it has the ability, if I'm saying this correctly, it has your music, your phone. Basically, their premise is you can use this. It's not a heart rate monitor in and of itself. It can sync with your heart rate monitor, but um, it's music and your phone, so you don't have to go running with your huge phone. And if you have phones like me, like <laughs> I have two Samsung Galaxy Notes, you know, I will tell you that when I go running and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> it's as big as my head. You see what I'm saying? So I thought that was really cool. But here's what I think is the coolest thing ever. I, I'm such a nerd. The way that you charge this phone, I hope I can show you. Let me set this down. Look at this. This is like the worst selfie view, right? When you turn your phone on and you're like, <laughs> you see that? Look how you charge this. It's like a clippy thing. And this clippy goes, can you see it underneath? It goes into these. So look, this 
That's how you charge it. Is that not the coolest thing? Let me see if I can plug it in so you see. Um, to my computer. This has really nothing to do. I've probably lost all of you watching. But then it'll tune in. Isn't that cool? I just love the clippy thing. Little things get me excited. Isn't that cool? So anyway, that had nothing to do with anything. So good morning, you guys. Um, I already forget what I titled my um, Periscope, but I know the topic um, had to do with limitations and losing your limitations. Oh, a USB device is not recognized. Whatever. I didn't ask you to recognize it. So, um, hey, Casey. So, hello to everybody. And here's my thing, you guys. This is rather simple. Wow, I'm just looking crazy on a Friday. Um, but I'm going to lead into this with telling you guys that, remember, if you were on one of my scopes earlier in the week, and FYI, what I'm trying to do is once I get into my point, I'm not going to answer comments, and then I'll address them at the end. So I hope you don't think I'm ignoring you, but I'm trying to not make my scopes be like 200 minutes long for your sake and for those that are watching on the replay. Thank you for the hearts, and also for those of you on the replay, I appreciate hearts as well because it does help me see what's um, helpful to you guys, what kind of content you want me to talk about, and what type is like a dead wall that totally bores you to death. Um, hello, Thrive Fit. Um, so last night, I did my workout at um, 6, I think maybe 6.30. And for those of you that watch my scope, um, I think it was either the day or the day before, I had said, I had this moment of clarity. After I remodeled and, and set up my new stand desk in my office, Exhibit A, which is so awesome and I'm loving it. And it even comes, by the way, with a little mat so you can have support for your back. Um, but that just so fired me up and I was like, yes, I can't wait to attack the day. And then I realized like one of the things that was still messing me up in my day was trying to get my workouts done in the morning. So all of a sudden I'm, I'm moving right into this labeling and limiting yourself. I decided that I was going to become, I was going to segue into being a evening workout person. And you guys, I remember hearing something recently on someone's podcast, I think Actually, I don't know who it was. And they were talking about how people will label themselves and go, I'm not a morning person. I'm, I'm just not a morning person. I'm not outgoing like you. There's all kinds of, Tony Robbins says it really well. And for those of you that have never been to a Tony Robbins event, I used to be like you and be skeptical until I went. And he's amazing and, and just very matter of fact. And it's all business. But he uses this phrase, self-limiting beliefs. We have beliefs about ourselves, or you can call it labels. I think we label ourselves. And thank you for the hearts. Um, we, we put labels on ourselves. We don't even realize how limiting they are. But most of them are untrue. I've labeled myself. I used to say for years, oh, I'm just not a runner. I can't run. And that was, you know why? You know why I said that? Because the few times that I would go out and run... I didn't know how to breathe correctly, and so I would always get cramps, and I just assumed that God made me funny, and I couldn't run, and then my friend Amy Burford started running out of the blue, and she's like, yeah, I'm running, and I'm doing this, and I'm like, wait a sec, what? what? So she challenged me to start running, and I, I started buying books and figuring out, I think it was that Chi Running. How many runners are still here on the scope? Um, I think it was Chi Running. I hope I'm saying it correctly, but it showed me how to breathe. And guess what? Suddenly, I was a runner. I didn't take any pill. I didn't take a course, um, you know, to become certified in being a runner. I always was a runner. I was just labeling myself because of some misinformation that I couldn't run. Um, I also said I'm not an entrepreneur. Kind of fooled myself on that one. I founded a company and it's profitable and exploding. So there's that. Um, and guys, I'm not sharing these points with you to be like, this is the Kelly O full of herself show. I'm just, it's best for me to tell you that if I can get past these limitations, so can you, because this is what I get fired up about, among other things. When I see people, so many of you, that are down on yourselves, you don't believe in yourself, you want you deep inside, you want to do something more, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a massive career change. You know, sometimes I think 
people might watch my scopes and go, oh, this is just for people that want to quit their jobs and start a business. No, not at all. This could be something that you want to do on the side. You know, maybe you want to author a cookbook and you love your job and you're cool with your job. I'm not telling everybody that. But I'm also telling you to understand that every time you start talking to yourself and going, well, I'd love to do a cookbook someday, but, um, you know, I just, I'm not like that person. I don't have a social media audience. I'm, I'm not outgoing and there's no way that I could get a publishing deal. People, when you talk about yourself that way, you, you're just basically two things. It's wrong. You, you don't know for sure that you can't do it because you haven't tried. Number two, you're really just backing yourself into a corner of massive limitation. And in a way, you're giving yourself a hall pass to stay in that like little safe comfort zone and never do anything that's going to catapult you into a completely different lifestyle that could be extraordinarily rewarding for you. I have been guilty of this as well. I have labeled myself in every conceivable way. I said, how many of you guys think that you're bad with money? I'm just curious. Either let me know in hearts or let me know in the comments. I have always, since I got into college, and um, my arm is starting to hurt, um, killer workout yesterday. Um, so I see hearts that some of you that are still here. It's a light Friday, you guys. <laughs> Everybody must be like sleeping in today. But so many of you, I know, have said this in the past, and I, I used to always say, I'm not good with money, I'm horrible with money, I'm not good at saving, I'm not good at managing my money. The more that I said that, guess what it did? It just gave me the reason to never attack finances. Let me just tell you, I told you guys that I sat down with my dad, who's really good at this, and I humbled myself to say... I know I can do this, and I haven't done it before, just like I did with running. And guess who's like the biggest nerd and loves, I mean, it's like payday today, and I can't wait to sit down, balance everything, and see where I'm at. And I'm like, I have stuff up on my whiteboard that is like financial goals and where I am with paying off the rest of my debt. It is the coolest thing ever. This person... I labeled myself my whole life. I'm not a financial person. I'm bad at money. I'm, I'm, I'm always going to be bad at money. If you're labeling yourself that way, you know, if there's people like Nicole, if you're still on this, I bet you, before you started your own company and started branching out, you're like, I can't do that. You know, maybe Casey can do it or maybe this person can do it. But I can tell you guys stories after stories after stories of some of my fit financial ambassadors that blow my mind because they've done just what Nicole did, what Casey did, what Jill Hanner did. Notably, most of these people are in the New York and Pennsylvania area. Um, totally. I even shied away to, from talking to people about it. Yeah. See, and I did that. You guys know when I quit my job in 2011, um, August 8th, 2011, and I quit my job, I deep inside, even though Fitflential was growing and I had to quit my job in the past couple of months, I've gotten more confident and that will grow, right? The more that you become confident, Nicole, it builds because you're like, that was easy. People responded to that. People like my product. They want to hear more. And then because of that, I kind of wrote about this on my blog yesterday. Um, you know, you take a couple steps in one direction and you're like, that was not so, that was not so difficult. Difficult conversations, same thing, but I'm going to stay focused. The more that you step out of your comfort zone and start believing in yourself, trust me, everything will change. But when I quit my job, um, to run Fitfluential full-time, the first massive amount of fear came in, like, I'm going to quit my job, and this is not going to work. We're not going to make any money, and um, I'm going to fall flat on my face. My family's going to laugh at me. All of these, the people that I quit my job at, at NMS, they're all going to laugh at me. They're going to be like, Kelly Alexa is such an idiot. And yeah, could that have happened? Absolutely. But you know what? What's the alternative? It could have been ridiculously successful like we are. And it didn't happen right away. So, you know, that's the other thing. I want to make sure when I get you guys fired up and believing in yourself, I'm not saying like tomorrow, if you decide to do this in three months, you're going to be successful. You're going to be rolling in the dough. I'm not saying that. But I have heard, first of all, I've experienced massive change in letting go, as Tony Robbins says, of my limiting beliefs about myself. Okay, keep thinking about that. Limiting beliefs about yourself because it's usually us that says, I can't do that. I'm not that way, whatever. And 
I love how Joel Osteen says this. He was talking about how people will come to him and say the same similar things. And his reaction was very simple. Like, who told you that? Who told you you can't do that? Who told you that you can't be an author? Who told you that you can't run? Who told you you can't run a marathon? Who told you you can't do CrossFit? Who told you that you can't transition from paleo to vegan? <laughs> Not that that would usually happen, but I have seen it. Who told you you can't start your own business? Who told you that? You know, and if you start to look and answer that question, go, well, uh... And, and worse, if you answer that question and go, oh, well, my parents always said that, or my family has always said that about me, or, you know, people at, at my job said, then that's even more reason why you should challenge that. And, and if it's something you want to do, shake it off. Start shaking off that idea that you can't be an entrepreneur, that you can't run, that you can't, um, you know, go be a personal trainer and, and reach your best physique ever. Um, shake off all of your assumptions about yourself because I can can tell you this, the people that achieve success and happiness and happiness, by the way, is it's it's individual. Our definition of happiness, it's not about how much money you have. It's not about how many books you sold. It's not about what level of, um, you know, press or press that you get for your company or how how much money and revenues your your business makes it's individual for some people happiness is the ability to work from home and see their kids um you know it could be anything but you're not going to see successful happy people that are walking around excited you know to share and pass on to you guys their wealth of knowledge people that haven't done a lot of work people that haven't taken a risk Ultimately, you're going to have to take some kind of a risk, but I can tell you, once you do take that first risk, and there's a difference, remember this, remember this quote, because it's a quote I heard early on, and it stayed with me. There's a difference between taking risks and taking a calculated risk. A calculated risk is when you investigate what you want to do. You know all of the risks. You know the potential outcomes. You know what you have to do. It's it's beyond being impulsive and going, yeah, I'm just going to quit my job today. It's Friday. Kelly had a cool periscope, so I'm just going to quit my job. And then that person, you go, well, what are you going to do? I don't know. I'm just going to quit my job. That's being a risk taker in not a good way. A risk taker, yeah, somebody somebody would probably do that. I have no doubt. A calculated Calculated risk is like I did. I mean, I wait. I knew exactly what I was getting into when I quit my job. I knew that we had, you guys, when I quit my job, we had no clients yet. We had no money in the bank. I had no employees. I had no ability to pay employees. Um, I had no, I think I said I had no business plan. Um, I really had no idea how I was going to grow the company. Um, certainly no investors lined up. And <laughs> Somehow I just did it. I knew this is what I was supposed to do. I knew that the growth wasn't going to slow down. And I knew I trusted myself. I trusted that God was leading me in the right direction and that all things would fall into place. And I remember when we got our first check, and I think it was like for $1,000 um, for a Brita campaign. And we were like, yeah, we got money. <laughs> it was $1,000 and we had four employees and I have bloggers to pay. And, you know, seriously, if some of you are on this scope, it'd be pretty funny if anybody was on that Brita campaign because I would die. Um, but then shortly after that, we got our biggest client, one of our first biggest clients ever, GNC. And you know why we got GNC? Because of that's another scope I'll get into. But you guys know I always talk about it. Because of relationships, because of relationships I built, and these relationships foster clients for my business. But you guys, you've got to stop talking to yourself. Like, if you find yourself saying this on a regular basis, either in your brain or maybe you're talking to someone else, you know, in your family, your husband, your wife, your um, significant other, your kids, whatever, and you find yourself going, I could never do that. You know, I'm just, I'm not this, I'm not that. Think about whether you are or whether you aren't. I have said all my life, I'm not, not all my life. Recently, I said to myself, I'm just not good at getting my workout done. If I put it off until the evening, I'm just, it's not going to get done. And I've realized the more that I say that, the more I'm convincing myself that I'm not a night worker outer. <laughs> that's not even a word. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, that's, you guys, the past three or four months, I've been in this like circle of stress because I'm trying to get up in the morning, get all my work done when I'm most fired up and full of momentum. 
meaning my business, and and also do my workout. And those two things were, were conflicting with each other. And finally, you know, last night or the night before, I said, you know what? I think I'm going to do my workouts at five or six o'clock every night. And all of a sudden, it was like the, the seas parted and I saw how my days could be. And it was like, yo! Now, I worked out last night and it was not a problem. And now I'm kind of excited because I realized like it's going to be so awesome to work during the day. And now I can look forward to the end. For me, I can look forward to the end of the day. That's when I'm going to get my workouts done. So many people, you guys are labeling yourselves. And, and I see this a lot. I see people that want to write a book, get a personal trainer certification, start an online coaching business, um, move up in their jobs, but they'll go, well, you know what? I can't do that because I don't have my master's. There's been a lot of people on here on my scopes that say, I want to do this, but I don't have a degree. Um, those are limit, lim- self-limiting beliefs that you think are going to limit you, but I guarantee you they will not limit you. I've said this before. If you were talking about college degrees, I would hire anybody. I mean, certainly I'm going to look if somebody has a college degree, but what's more important to me is hustle, professionalism, integrity, and creativity, and the ability to, you know, dive in, be coachable, be a team player. Those traits you cannot teach in college. And Again, I don't want to be misinterpreted and say I'm telling everybody not to go to college. But if you're telling yourself, I can't ask for a raise because they only give raises. How many people? I've heard so many people say this. I can't do this. They only hire uh, people with MBAs. They only will promote people to senior vice president and have an MBA. And I don't have the money to get an MBA. That's baloney. If you're qualified, you go ask for that job and you create a plan that shows why you can do it. And that, you know, maybe an MBA might be paid here, but maybe you're willing to be paid here. I can guarantee you most companies, if they know you can do the job and they can pay you less, they will be all over that. Okay. It's all about the bottom line. So if it's good for you, and it's good for them, present it. Make the business case for it. If you think that you can't run or you think that you've just started running and, you know, somebody says, do a marathon, and you're like, I could never do a marathon. I, there's, there's no way. Uh, look up stories. I Just Google Fit Fluential, I guarantee you. Just Google the hashtag. You will find within probably an hour somebody that said they could never run and they're doing marathons like it's nobody's business now. You guys... I just will, I got to wrap this up, but this is the simplest concept and it is so true. I meet people like this all the time and sometimes it can happen, that switch, where all of a sudden they listen to a few things I say, I'm coaching somebody right now and I've watched them start to transform. It's like a flip, a 180 flip in in a week and um, you start to challenge their assumptions. They'll go, I can't do this. I can't do this. You know, I'm just, this is, this is where I'm stuck. There's no way I'm going to be able to do this. And, and I just start to ask them, like, why could you not do this, this, and this? And you see they have this head tilt moment of like, oh, I, I guess I could. And then they try one little thing, you know, and I've said to people like, why don't you do this? Why don't you ask for this? Why don't you go to work and ask your boss if you could, you know, sometimes it can be something as simple as asking for what you want um, at work. Maybe you um, would like a more flexible schedule so that you can, you know, whatever it is. But people are scared to ask for what they want because they're thinking, my boss doesn't like me and they, you know, my company never lets people telecommute and work from home. Well, maybe you could be the first person that's going to ask for that and prove that it is valuable because you're saving overhead and you're actually going to cut down on three hours round trip commute and that's three more hours that you can work for the company. What do you have to lose? So I really encourage you guys to understand and start thinking about this in your own life. This can be about fitness. This can be about your relationships. This can be about anything. It can be about, you know, asking for what you want in relationships, or maybe it's getting out of a relationship. So many people I know, how many people here on the scope stay in relationships because you know, you're too scared to have the difficult conversations or you think, well, you know, this person's good on paper and, you know, I should stay. I really don't have any reason to leave. Well, if you're not happy and you're constantly stressed out because of the relationship and you, you know, you're limiting yourself, you could be contributing to somebody else's life um, and in being experiencing more happiness 
in your life by not being stuck in a relationship that pulls you down and drags you, you know, just drains you of your energy. Too many people just stay stuck. And, and that's something too. You should believe in yourself, believe in yourself that there's somebody out there that is, you know, the yin to your yang that is going to be perfect for you. And it doesn't mean love at first sight. It doesn't mean Cinderella, all of that. But if you believe you know, this is what I deserve. This is what I'm willing to accept. This is what I want. Guess what? Down the road, that's the type of person you're going to meet. If you stay in a dead end relationship that you're miserable about, but you're like, well, I just, I can't. And, you know, he's, you know, he or she, you know, they're good. And, you know, it's nice. And I really shouldn't, I really shouldn't want more. Yes, you should. And you deserve more. So I have to tell you guys, I hope you go into the weekend and start Looking at the areas in your life that you're kidding yourself, that you're limiting yourself. If you've had any kinds of conversations or beliefs about yourself like I did, I can't run, I'm bad at finances, I'm not good at that, you know, catch yourself and go, wait a minute, what, do I, what is it that I think I'm not good at? And what is it that I think maybe I could branch out and change and do? Because I guarantee you, you have the potential to do so much more than you think. And if you just take one area, take one area and challenge your beliefs about yourself and do something. And whatever you do, in whatever area I'm telling you to look at, whatever area you decide to test, don't worry about what people think about you. Don't worry about that. That is the biggest self-limitation you can do is going, but if I do this, blah, 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 that person. Anytime you catch yourself going, but if I do this or say this or change this, or if I, you know, I've heard people say this about losing weight. If I tell people at the office that I'm going on a diet, they'll laugh. I have so much weight to lose and I've tried so many diets before and it hasn't worked. Who gives a crap? Those people, if they're going to give you any kind of negative feedback, that's a reflection of what a jag tool bag they are, not you. You just shake it off and you move on because there's people here in Periscope land. There's people here in this great social media world. Of course, I'm going to plug Fitfluential. That's what Fitfluential is built on. That's what we believe in is, you know, having each other's back and we rise by lifting others. There's plenty of people that will high five you, encourage you. And again, that's something you always want to focus on is surrounding yourselves with people that that have your back, that are going to tell you you can do this, that you can do better. So challenge your assumptions. Do this for the rest of your life. Take a step out on faith because I guarantee you, like Nicole said, like I've told you, the second you start stepping out and you have these little successes, it will just light up a fire inside of you. And your whole future will be completely different. You know, this could be from the on the physical fitness side. It could be in a relationship side. It could be in business. It could be in all of the above. Step out. Stop thinking of yourself that you can't. Stop listening to what you think other people say about you. And really just stop li- worrying about what people think of you, period. That's not your job. Your job is not to make Sally, who lives next door, approve of you. Because Sally, you know, probably has better things to do and it just doesn't matter. So cheers to you guys. I hope you have an outstanding, awesome Friday. I'm ready to kick so much butt today. I'm so excited. It's the weekend and it's time to go buy pumpkin spice everything and set up my house for fall with like leave. I am such a nerdy Hobby Lobby decorator. You guys have no idea. And I'll give you a tour of my house next week so you can see it. Hello, 3D Fitness. Um, so again, thank you guys for watching. I hope this was inspiring. Please remember um, everybody uh, September 11th and take a time to think about that. And again, take let that change the way that you think when you're fighting with anybody. Be the bigger person and say you're sorry. Um, Because like that one song says, it's better to be kind than right. That's the thing that I always, whenever I'm feeling stubborn, I always think about that. But uh, I will see you guys over at my blog, kellyalexa.com. Again, last call out, make sure you head on over to fitfluential.com and subscribe and download the new app. Thank you for the hearts. You guys are the bomb. I love chatting with you guys on Periscope every morning. It's such a great start to my day. Plus, I get to wear my glasses. I need to wear these more often. I kind of feel like Ashley Banfield, only she's way hotter, and she usually has makeup on when she talks to people, unlike me. (laughs) So you guys have a good day. I'm going to try and stop my scope.